This video is a follow-up to our using an Epic-based workstation as two desktops, which we released two weeks ago. Based on your feedback and questions, I'll dive deeper into the setup, the upgrades, and some of the challenges we've tackled since then. First, let's talk about what changed since our last video. Editing that video took longer than expected, and during that time, we made some upgrades to the system. We've added a third GPU, a Radeon RX 7900 XT. It's assigned to a headless Arch Linux VM and is primarily used for machine learning experiments. With its 20 gigs of VRAM, it handles models like Llama 3.2 Vision, Gemma 2, and Gwen 2.0 effortlessly. All these models are in the neighborhood of 10 to 30 billion parameters. I think we can go even higher than that. It's been a fantastic addition to the workstation. Beyond that, the workstation has become even more integrated into our home lab. Apart from hosting our two desktops, it now runs an Ubuntu server for GitHub and GitLab workers, a second Ubuntu server for containerized services like Image and some personal projects, a local DevPy cache, which speeds up Python project builds significantly, and of course the new GPU server I just mentioned. Now onto your questions. As far as normal usage goes, the majority of our use cases are centered around normal developer workflow. Lots of code building, editing, running, tooling around all that. The ample compute makes the experience very fluid. I cannot remember the last time my editor showed a sign of slowdown while, for example, indexing a large project. As Shane from Stuffman here once said, sometimes it's better to throw more compute at one of problem than waste time optimizing it. As far as distros go, I use Arch Linux because I like to have the latest software and I find it gets in the way the least. My partner uses Debian for its stability and familiarity. Neither of us has a strong preference really and this setup should be achievable on pretty much any distro. This brings me to a question about using multi-seed. And I also answer the why did you choose Proxmox question. I picked Proxmox because I already had experience with it and I also defaulted to using VMs because I like the isolation and independence of each machine. The multi-seed argument makes sense in the context of the video title and the main purpose, but I knew from the start that this system would also double as a traditional server when needed. Multi-seed would maybe allow me to run additional services alongside our desktops, but I feel it would couple things together a bit too much. Also, it is amazing how easy it is to move a VM to another host in Proxmox. I'll give you an example. The Docker host VM used to run on our Odyssey single board computer, which is our first local server, but it did not have enough horsepower for the video transcode and quick data transfer that image requires. So I moved the whole VM to the Epic in about three clicks and 15 minutes it took to backup and restore the VM. Also, some choices in general were made purely for the learning opportunity and not necessarily because they were the optimal ones. For disks, we use simple disk images on a single Gen 4 SSD. I've yet to find it a bottleneck, though I wonder how long it will last under such load. That's it for the main questions. Also, big thank you for all the positive feedback and praise. I honestly didn't expect the video would get that much attention and I'm glad you liked it. We have a bunch of things in the works currently and would like to open up more and share the stuff we are working on. I cannot promise regular uploads, but I would love to always match or exceed the quality and usefulness of the content. Let me know if you would like me to dive deeper into any of the topics discussed so far. As far as the home lab is concerned, we would like to do a LAN and a network closet revamp and also either replace or upgrade our NAS to a solid state one, using used SSDs and enough redundancy to back that up. 